Hi, Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. Uh, it's a beautiful day here, so I've come outside to do uh, this uh, part two. Uh, this is uh, part two of the detail in uh, calibrating your digital negatives. Uh, in part one I showed you my workspace setup and uh, I demonstrated the uh, coating of uh, a sheet of palladium paper. And uh, that was Berger Cot 320. You'd have to repeat this uh, calibration process for anything that you change. If you have two different papers that you like to use, you'd have to calibrate each one. Uh, now, I suspect that a calibration is going to get you reasonable results on either paper, but to, to, to be uh, precise, and particularly if you're using the expensive palladium stuff, uh, you'd calibrate for each. So we're talking uh, today about um, the base printing time. How, how long do you have to expose your negative uh, to the UV light uh, to, get a, to get a good print? And the base printing time is actually about getting uh, the maximum black. Um, and that's it. That's all you're trying to do here. So you're, you're looking for a, uh, a time that's going to give you the blackest blacks for your particular process. Now. You know, let's be clear that um, different processes give you different blacks. Uh, a silver gelatin uh, print on a glossy fiber base is going to give you a much uh, richer black than the palladium process. Um, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I think it was Minor White. I think I think it was who said that uh, the the blackness of your black doesn't matter. What you want, what you what you really want is a convincing black and uh, that's what you get okay so we want to find maximum black and that's our base printing time and here's how I do it now I said in the overview video for this that uh, Peter Maha does does this differently uh, and I haven't looked at how he does it in his book if that's if that's what you want to use then you, you know get his book and I strongly advise you get his book it's not expensive and it's a really good process um, but I do it uh, a little bit differently because uh, for a long time I've had these uh, calibrated Stufa wedges now if you want to get a Stufa wedge you don't need it to be calibrated okay but frankly the price difference is minuscule anyway and and in and these are pretty cheap things so now this is uh, this is what they are I'm going to um, include a little snippet of some close-ups of this uh, of the wedge and the prints from the wedge uh, but that's all it is all right these are there's uh, thir there are 30 steps on here 1 to 31 uh, and it covers uh, a range of 3.0 so each step is 0.3 of a stop uh, okay so uh, three steps uh, would give you uh, do I mean that? Yeah, 0.3. So three steps will give you a st one stop of uh, difference. Okay, so that's uh, a 10 stop range. Uh, okay, and that's good. That will give you the dynamic range of your uh, of your system as well. And these are numbered uh, 1 to 31. And what you're looking for is for step one and two to merge. Right, so they they're both indistinguishable from each other but you can distinguish step three from step two okay now when you're doing this so that's you also want a, a little strip of the material that you're going to print on uh, ultimately uh, because it is through that that you want to get your maximum black okay uh, so those are the uh, tools and you also want uh, a strip of coated paper right so this piece of coated paper has got uh, messy now because it's a couple of weeks old and uh, it's been lying about but I just thought it would be okay to um, sort of show you so you could have strip off wide enough for your uh, step wedge to fit on you put the step wedge on half covered with your material so you can see the two sides when you make your print uh, and then you put that into whatever, you did, in whatever you're using. I have a vacuum bed, as you saw in the previous um, 
video and I just put that on and turn the vacuum on. Uh, you might uh, you might use a completely different light source. Um, if you're just getting started in this stuff and you don't want to go to a phenomenal expense, one thing you could use is just a a printing frame, um, and these come in various qualities and prices as well. But but I mean literally, a piece of blackened plywood, plywood painted matte black, a piece of glass on top, uh, you use six mil glass, and some of those big bulldog clips on each side would be perfectly fine and then just point it towards the sun and use that as your um, as your starting point for uh, this kind of uh, printing um, but whatever your light source is you're going to expose this to the light uh, and then develop your strip and I've got some strips here that um, uh, that I made I've, I actually ended up making uh, four don't ask me why um, I have no idea why I made four okay uh, the the um, the others uh, wouldn't have given me uh, the separation that I want uh, in the uh, one, two, and three steps. Um, but it didn't take four. I I actually used two times. I started off with uh, a time of ten minutes, uh, and that wasn't enough. Now this one is a time of fifteen minutes, and the one and two. Uh, let me just make sure. Uh, yep, the one and two do indeed merge, and I can make out step three. Now, I now use 15 minutes, but strictly what I should do is take the view that, well, these are one-third stop apart, so to separate the one and two now, I should reduce the time by one-third of a stop, which would actually take me to about 12 minutes, I think, something like that. Uh, but I use 15. It, it's, uh, it's working uh, fine. Um, but if I had something critical in the uh, blacks, I might just reduce that by one third of a stop. Um, but as I say, I'm going to make some uh, I'm going to make some uh, close-ups of this so you can see what I'm talking about. So you get your strip, you expose it to the light, uh, go through the go through the development process as you intend to go through it, uh, and then let it dry. Don't try and judge this while it's still wet, but let it dry. And then look for those merging. Now, <coughs> excuse me. When I did this for ten minutes, I didn't get a merge between steps one and two. It wasn't enough, uh, so I increased by half a stop to fifteen minutes. Now I knew it was going to be hereabouts because uh, I've been printing palladium for many years, and uh, on the uh, on the plate burner that I use, I've typically had a time of sort of eleven, twelve, thirteen minutes something of that order so I knew it was going to be in that ballpark now if this is your first time you may not uh, you may not have any real idea so just pick a number uh, I think 10 minutes is probably a good starting point and then increase or decrease by uh, however much bearing in mind that each each step on the step wedge is one third of a stop so if you chose a time and you got steps one two three all merging you might want to reduce that by half a stop Okay, so uh, a, th a third to get uh, delineation in the three, and then just a little extra to uh, see where you're at with the one and the two. Uh, so a third or a half stop, uh, and then try again. And if that's still not quite right, then make your adjustment. And that's a good thing about a step wedge. It, you know that these things are uh, accurately made, and uh, you know that if you want to shift the exposure by one wedge either way, it's a third of a stop. And, and so it cuts down wastage tremendously. I, uh, I mean, I, I think darkroom printers should use uh, this uh, same process. Uh, use a step wedge to uh, get that maximum uh, black time. Okay, so that's, uh, that's kind of all there is to it uh, to get that time. And once you've got that time, that's your printing time. Okay. Um, to get the whites, you're going to ch we're going to change the contrast, and I'm going to talk to you about that uh, as well. Okay, so that's what we need uh, so far. So you're going to need a sheet of coated paper, you're going to need a stufa step wedge, and a little strip of the material that you use, and some way of exposing uh, to UV light. Uh, you might use the sun. You might use uh, another cheap way is to get one of those face tanning. Uh, things you know that pump out UV light to give you a, a tan like a tanning bed 
uh, you could use one of those. Um, you could fashion yourself something out of blacklight uh, fluorescent tubes or um, a mercury discharge lamp from high level fittings. There are a whole range of things that people uh, use with these things. But don't go to too much expense if this is the start of your process. Uh, okay, so I'm going to finish there. Uh, I'm going to make a, a f uh, one or two close ups of the um, steps that I used and of the step wedge itself uh, just to show you what it is I'm talking about. And uh, that's stage two. That's the, uh, that's the time to get maximum black for your process. Okay, I hope that's been of some interest. Bye for now. Okay, so here we are. I uh, hope you can hear that. Let me pick this up. Okay, so here we are. This is the Stufa step wedge. Um, I think that's pretty self explanatory. You can see uh, the little strip of material down here. Okay, so that's the tool that we're going to use. Let me just take that out of the way uh, for a minute. And let's put this in. Now, this might be a little tricky to see, but let me see if I can pick this out for you. So, here, next to my finger is step five. Four, three, two, one. And I think you'll be able to see that you can pick out the difference between step two and step one. That was a ten minute step wedge. A 10 minute exposure for that step wedge. So that clearly didn't work. So this one is uh, the 15 minute exposure. And I think you can pick out that two and uh, one are just about uh, perfect. There's five, four, three, two, one in there. Uh, and I called that done. I was pretty happy with that. Okay, so I hope that's of some use. 